This is the Ancestral Findings Podcast, number 65. Did you know mail order brides were popular in the Old West in the United States? I'll show you why, and why so many women decided to become them in this episode. During the initial American settling of the western part of North America, it was mainly men who went out there. They went to look for gold, to start homestead farms and ranches, and to begin new lives where resources were plentiful, spaces were wide and open, and there was a lot more freedom than back east. However, the many single men who went west soon found themselves to be lonely. They may have had male friends nearby, or maybe they didn't. Either way, it was no substitute for having female companionship. Only a small number of men brought wives and families with them. The number of single women in the West was negligible. There were a few, but far from enough to go around compared to the men who went there on their own. It wasn't long before men started to think of creative ways to get wives without having to travel away from their land and risk it being claimed or taken over by someone else while they were gone. Some men wrote home asking friends and family for recommendations for single women they knew who would make good wives, and the courtship was by correspondence until the couple decided to marry when the woman would go west for the ceremony and start her new life. However, a much more common scenario was the mail-order bride. Men in the west advertised in eastern newspapers for wives. In the ads, they would tell a bit about themselves and what they were looking for in a wife. Interested women who met the qualifications of a particular advertiser would write back. From there, the process from first letter to marriage was much the same as for men who got wives through their social networks back home. Once in a while, a woman would advertise in a Western newspaper looking for a husband, usually if she wasn't finding anyone who was interested in her, or vice versa, at home, and the courtship process was the same as if she was answering an ad rather than writing one. Women who answered the ads for wives in the West were those who weren't finding men, or men of quality, at home, or those who wanted to get away from home for some reason. Reasons including having strict parents, being the subject of a scandal that was ruining their reputation, or simply wanting adventure and or a new start after something bad happening at home. These women needed to find husbands elsewhere, in places far away from where they lived. Surprisingly, there was no shortage of women who answered these mail-order bride ads. Many Old West marriages were made this way. In most cases, the marriages went smoothly as both parties represented themselves accurately. No one wanted to travel a thousand miles or more across the continent or wait for someone to travel that far to go get them, only to find there were lies involved that would make the marriage an unpleasant one for one or both of them. However, there were the occasional stories of mail-order bride ventures gone awry. One notable example, though by all means not the only one, is that of 22-year-old schoolmistress Elizabeth Berry and bachelor minor Louis Dreibelbees. Louis described himself as a lonely minor in his ad. Elizabeth was concerned about becoming a spinster since she was still unmarried at 22 which was approaching old age in the Old West marriage market. Elizabeth packed up her things after a short correspondence with Lewis and went to California to marry him. On the way, her stagecoach was robbed. But one of the three robbers allowed her to keep her luggage, which had her wedding dress and all her other belongings for her new life in it. She noticed the man had a ragged scar on one hand. Later that day, she reached Lewis's house and they went to the Justice of the Peace to get married after she got dressed for the ceremony. After they exchanged vows and were pronounced man and wife, Elizabeth thought she recognized Lewis's voice and saw the same ragged scar in his hand as she'd seen on the robber when he signed the marriage license. Realizing he was one of the robbers, she fled and history does not record what became of her. It turns out Lewis was indeed a minor but he neglected to say in his ad that he supplemented his income robbing stagecoaches with a couple of his friends. If one of your ancestors was a mail-order bride, researching her history may give you an interesting story as to why she decided to become one. 
Learning about her life after moving to marry her new husband will also provide a really interesting family tale from a unique Old West institution. Sometimes in your genealogical research, you will be given an heirloom that does not belong to your family. In the next episode of the Ancestral Findings podcast, I'll show you how to find who it belongs to and why you should look. <music> <laughs>